Okay, some revision then for tomorrow's test, end of term four test, which of course you're doing just at the beginning of term five. So the first thing we did together, as I recall, was the periodic table, and here is the periodic table. Now, you need to know, I'm not gonna go through this now, but you need to know the history of the periodic table. Uh, from Mendeleev and Dalton through, or Dalton Mendeleev through to the uh, the current table and the uh, the guesses he made, and uh, how they have come to be proven correct in terms of where elements belong, even though we haven't found them. So, periodic table, you have your uh, groups vertically, group one, group two. Uh, and here we have our transition metals, which we're not going to talk about particularly at the moment. And we have groups 3, 2, 7 and group 0 on the end here, sometimes called group 8. So uh, you have uh, the halogens in group 7. You have a noble gases in group zero or group eight. Over on the other side, you've got group one. You have your alkali metals. Then you have your alkali earth metals in group two. Hydrogen stands out on its own. The group number is the number of electrons in the outer shell. So all of these have got one electron in the outer shell, all of these have got two, three, four, five, six, seven. And either eight electrons in the outer shell or group zero, because these are uh, the noble gases. These don't react because they have a full outer shell. So it isn't just eight uh, in that helium has two. But here we have it and it and it. So these are noble gases, noble because they stand above everything else. They don't get involved. It's kind of where that comes from. So there you have your uh, periodic table. The, the groups are vertical, the periods are horizontal. And when you go from one period to the next, what you're doing is starting a new shell of electrons. So that's your periodic table. Now, we have the shells, which are uh, how the electrons are arranged. You can have two electrons as a maximum in the first shell nearest the nucleus, and then you can have eight electrons in every other shell. There's a variation to that, but we're not going to go into that now. So the, the groups are elements with similar properties. As I said, they have the same number of electrons in the outer shell. And the period is when you begin a new uh, outer shell. Now, I talked about the transition metals in here. Uh, these are between groups two and three. Uh, they have more complex chemistry. They can form more than one ion. For example, uh, copper forms both copper one and copper two plus. Uh, so they often form colored compounds. And compounds in here often make good catalysts. Uh, more of that later on in the course. So. All of these elements uh, become more stable by achieving a full outer shell. Now over here, you have uh, elements which will achieve a full outer shell by losing the one that uh, they've got in that outer shell. So these will form positive ions when a lithium atom reacts with something it will lose its one outer electron and become a lithium ion plus one. 
the charge on the ion will be plus one because the charge on the nucleus is positive, the charge of the electrons is equally negative, so the atom has no overall charge. That is the same number of electrons as it has protons in the nucleus. So when it loses an electron, there's now an overall positive charge on what's left behind. So uh, each of these will form a plus one ion. Over here, group seven, you have uh, the halogens. And these have seven electrons in the outer shell, so they want to gain one in order to have a full eight electrons in the outer shell. So that's kind of how it goes. They're looking to form full outer shells of either two or eight electrons. So looking at the pattern of reactivity, these want to lose one electron from the outer shell and the electron is held in place by the attraction of the nucleus. Now, as you go down here, you can see you're going from uh, 7 to 23, if we go with the atomic number down here, 3 to 11 to 19. So you're getting more and more electrons because this is the number of protons in the nucleus and therefore the number of electrons orbiting the nucleus. So you're getting more and more electrons. You're getting, as you go down the period, you're getting more and more uh, shells of electrons. So this outer electron down here with francium, it's quite a long way from the nucleus compared to lithium. And so it's really easy to lose it because the attraction with the nucleus is less. And so francium is extremely reactive. So it's really easy for francium to lose its electron, its outer electron. So the reactivity goes down, goes sorry, increases as you go down the, the group. Over here, however, in group seven, as you go down the group, as before, you have more and more shells of electrons. Electrons get further and further from the nucleus. But now over here, what these are trying to do is to attract an electron into the atom to form a negative ion. These will form minus one ions. And because the outer shell is getting further and further away from the nucleus, the attraction is less and less. So down here, you have less reactive halogen than you have up here. So the reactivity of the halogens goes down as you go down the group. The reactivity of the alkali metals goes up as you go down the group. And of course, aside from the distance, you also have the inner electrons shielding the outer electrons from the nucleus. And so for that reason as well, the reactivity increases as you go down the period here sorry, the group here, and it decreases as you go down the group here. So, you have what I said about shells. And you have what I said about groups. And you have the reactivity increases going down group one, decreases, oops, going down group seven. And the reason for that is, as I said, as you go down in group one, that outer electron is getting further from the nucleus, being more shielded by the electrons between it and the nucleus, and so it is easier to lose. And so francium is far more reactive than lithium. But over here, because the outer shell is getting further from the nucleus and shielded by the inner electrons, then uh, these are becoming less reactive. It is harder for the halogens down here to attract uh, that extra electron in to make a full outer shell than it is for fluorine and fluorine, for example. So there you have uh, the reactivity going down the period. Now, 
Another term that you need to be familiar with is relative atomic mass. Now, this is relative because it is the ratio of the average mass of the atom to one twelfth of the mass of a carbon atom. Now this is a, a unit that we use, one twelfth of the mass of a carbon atom is called an atomic mass unit and that's how we, we measure these things. Now we talk about uh, magnesium having a, a mass of 24, for example, you see here. Um, now, that is 24 twelfths of a carbon-12 atom. You'll appreciate that a carbon atom doesn't weigh uh, 12 grams, doesn't have a mass of 12 grams. Um, but we have the, the concept of the mole which allows us to talk in terms of grams. So we'll come back to the mole in a little bit. So the relative atomic mass, you can regard that really as just the atomic weight or atomic mass of the atom or of the molecule, if we're talking about know, carbon dioxide, then uh, the relative atomic mass or the relative molecular mass, I should say, uh, is uh, the, the mass of that molecule based on this uh, mass of one twelfth of the carbon atom. So you need to be able to work out the relative atomic mass of certain of any element you're given. So. Let's have a look at this. You may have seen this before, but I'll do no harm to do it again. So we have here, I'm going to leave you to do some of these, but I'll do some as examples. So calcium carbonate. Now, what you need to do is to find the relative atomic mass of calcium, of carbon, of oxygen, and you've got three oxygens, so you need three of those. So what you'll do is you'll say, well, calcium, looking down here, where is calcium? Calcium's here, Ca. So 40 we want there, calcium, we've got 40. And we're going to add in a carbon. And if we look for carbon, carbon is here, 12. So we have 40 plus 12. And then we have three oxygen, so I'm going to put that in brackets three times. And let's find oxygen then. Oxygen is here, 16. So you've got 40 plus 12, which is 52, plus 3 times 16, which is 48, gives you 100. So that's what you do for all of these. Uh, and I'm going to leave you to do that for a, for a few moments. So I'll ask you to stop the video and then uh, come back once you've done them all. But just to remind you that the uh, notation here, this is lithium, capital L, small i, which is the pattern for all of the elements which have a symbol uh, involving two letters. First one's big, second one's small. You can see that throughout. Some of them only have one, vanadium for example, V, carbon, C, boron, B. The top number is the mass number, that is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. The bottom number is the atomic number or proton number and that tells you the number of protons in the nucleus. Coincidentally, I say coincidentally, the definition of the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus it also happens to be the number of electrons orbiting the nucleus of the atom. But the definition of atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Don't talk about electrons if you ask what the atomic number is. But the number of protons and the number of electrons in an atom 
is the same. So I'm going to ask you now to stop the video, complete these, and then come back. So having done that, let's have a look at the answers to these. So oops. nitrogen, I'm not going to do all of these, I'm going to leave this with you, but if you look at nitrogen, nitrogen is 14. You got two of those, 28. Carbon is 12, hydrogen is one, so you got four of those, 12 plus four, 16. We did calcium carbonate as an example. Nitrogen, again, 14. Hydrogen, again, three, three of those, 17. Iron, if you look for iron, you find iron here, 56. So 56, two of those, three oxygens, it's 16. We said that before up here, 160. So there you have the answers to uh, your, your questions. Uh, we're missing uh, aluminium hydroxide at the very end. Uh, that comes out to be 78, uh, just in case you got that far. You should have done. So that's relative atomic mass. and a broad overview of the periodic table.